Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosnan of Steve Brosnan's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast, I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And it is Monday, again, May 2021, and this is episode 98 of the Artist Friends Podcast. My name is J. Kale. I'm here with my two best artist friends, and they are in their studios each time, which is a rare thing. Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everybody. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Dan. Hello, everybody. You both are coming from your studio. That's a good sign. That's a good thing. This is the first time I've got you to see Diane's studio. I guess I well, yeah, I didn't have internet out here before. <laughs> yeah, working and everything. Great. <laughs> so whenever we do our uh, 100th episode, which is going to be our first uh, video podcast, we'll be uh, we'll get our listeners to get Studio. You're going to clean your studio up a little bit, or are you just going to leave it the way it is? <laughs> leave it the way it is. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> it's real. That's right. All right. You know, you're probably not an artist. <laughs> <laughs> we have our stuff everywhere. My studio is my apartment. I'm not going to turn the camera around and show you. But uh... Mine's messy, but it's very organized. I'm I... I do, I do keep it organized, but it doesn't look that way. But somebody doesn't work. <laughs> but my brushes in. And I everybody got... has a method to their madness, and that's the way it mm-hmm. is. <laughs> exactly. Okay, with this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about um, artists talking about our art, telling their artist story, and uh, maybe um, talk a little bit about the vulnerability. You know, you have to. Sometimes be a little vulnerable and uh, maybe um, give a little more information about your share more information about your life and uh, your uh, your motivation for creating your art and everything. If our listeners go to www.talkartpodcast.com, that's talkartpodcast.com. There's a link there to uh, lesson three of the um, Paul Klein uh, Klein Artist Works uh, course that Diane and I participated in and we're in there with all the other artists and uh, you folks uh, listen to uh, the wisdom and the coaching of uh, Paul Klein and his uh, way of uh, drawing artists out and getting you to uh, think about uh, why you create the art and uh, what uh, motivates you and everything. Diane and I, we both tried to hide, but he called on us (laughs) to say something (laughs) For me, it was a way of uh, kind of like um, reviewing and thinking, 
Oh my God. That was almost five years ago. It was in 2017. And I was just start starting my, my career. And I, and I just didn't, didn't know anything. And it was, I was impressed by being with so many uh, talented artists who already seemed to be established. At least if you heard them talk, they appeared to be established. <laughs> Diane, what do you think about that? Bring back memories for you? Yeah, well, I had forgotten a lot of, I mean, a lot of those uh, episodes <laughs> that we had with him. But um, as far as, like, I think a lot of people, a lot, a lot of artists are in different um times of their career and so every time you want to advance a little bit you you know you want to learn something new or something so you take classes or you know you go online and find a, me a mentor that can guide you to, to advance your career because it's really hard to do by yourself um, and it's good to get different viewpoints of different artists especially even the different levels you know of artists at different levels because some are more advanced in some areas and you might be more advanced in something else that they're not. So it's, it's, um, it's a good thing to talk to other artists like that kind of stuff. It's a good example because that's how we, you know, we've never met in person physically, but we've met online and, uh, we were, uh, you know, co-students. And, uh, Constance, you took the, the next series that he offered after that, right? What, the game right. Of, yes. It was 22, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. uh, you uh, went through what do you think about that since you wasn't in that course but uh, uh, what do you think about the, me and Diane huh? weren't we geeks <laughs> were you what were we geeks Hi trying to hide and Paul Klein wouldn't let us hide <laughs> no you weren't geeks but I mean I understand the hiding sort of thing because I think when you first take the class everybody's sort of um Trying the first few episodes of the class, you're sort of trying to feel your way with all the other people in the class and listening to everybody else. I mean, that's how I was. I was trying to listen to everybody else and try to feel, get a feel for where they are in their life with the art scene. And um, Paul has a way of pulling you out of yourself, which is why you take classes from me because. Um, he was a gallerist and he uh and a gallery owner he did do that for years and you that's why you came to him to help you find yourself and where you need fit into the art scene and get information from him to help you get where you need to be and where you want to go in the art scene you know whether you want to pursue it or not or whether you want to go to a gallery or not or whether you want you know just kind of figure out what you your um method of how you want to even show yourself to the world is you know? you establish your path and one the thing that i got out of it uh, was he, he would talk about you know there are many art villages you know, right not necessarily in the gallery and that really kind of stuck with me because uh the uh i've hey Many times in in my in my career now, I have uh, followed the advice of Paul Klein. And, you know, unfortunately, yeah, he passed away you know, last year, but he was um, had been battling cancer you know, for several years and put up a good fight, but it finally it finally took him. Mm -hmm. But his uh, I have several video recordings. I have uh, some private sessions I had with with him, and of course, I got our course, and we. He put all of our uh, the core, the entire course, and he put all of the webinars that at the time we were taking the course were private. Uh, that was a project that, that he had hired me to help put those up on uh, YouTube, where he could uh, arrange them sort of on, on the site because he knew his his uh, battle was coming to an end, and uh, mm -hmm. kind of his gift to the art world. And we uh, in our episodes here in our podcast, we've uh, occasionally referenced some of those videos and some of those uh, interviews with uh, the professional artists. He had a knack for uh, uh, even in the, in the, he called them webinars, you know, those interviews with the uh, established artists of uh, bringing them out 
you know, and, and getting them. That's how we all, that's how the three of us met. I mean, I was in the KAW 22, you two were in the 21. And when the, when ours was over, some of us were going to do a get together like this, but then they didn't follow through. So I got a hold of you guys and decided <laughs> to have it with you guys because I wanted, I'm very remote where I live and I wanted to have people that I could talk to on a weekly basis to help me stay focused yep. and you two wanted the same thing so that's ever since then we have been getting together on Monday evenings to stay focused and that's how our whole podcast thing ended up getting together and it's, uh, after you know the class I I uh, because I was the same way. I knew that if I didn't stay in contact with uh, some of the artists I met in that class, I would just, I would fade away. I knew it. So it was from a complete selfish point of view that I wanted to continue. We had what? We had about six, six seven, you know? From, yeah, something like that. that originally, yeah. Originally, in that, that first year. Every every Monday, we were all meeting on Zoom, you know. And, and, and one by one, they were dropping off. <laughs> well, as human beings, we're social creatures. And even though, I mean, if you are remote and you want to just use the Internet, you still need a base of people to touch base with. And that's what we decided to do, you know, is is to just have each other to to be in contact with because I live in the country and it's hard to be in touch with other people here with art. So that's why, you know, the, the three of us have this, you know, is to, yeah. I mean, we've tried to have other people be in touch with us, you know, to come in with us and we're still open to that. Anybody who wants to join us can. You know, we're open and they can be a part of the podcast or not. You know, if they want to just be a visitor and sit and listen to us, they can. But if they want to participate, they're all welcome to, you know, so. I mean, we don't bite. <laughs> we, were, we were meeting and then where it got to where it seemed like it was only the three of us. And what was it? 2018, I think it was. I said, no, 2019. Near the end of 2019, I said, let's, uh, I asked you to, if, if you wanted to, uh, you know, start recording. But right away, it was, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah, for that, yeah. So, I said, you know, with the Zoom technology, it also, it records an audio version. And uh, we'll just, you know, record the audio version. I remember the first, oh, as always. It's interesting. <laughs> You guys know when I when I say okay, I'm going to start recording. Everybody freezes up. We did it first, yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're over it now, though. I get you to shut up, Constance. <laughs> <laughs> I can get on a tear sometimes, though. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, so we we got the you know we got more comfortable, and in telling our artist story, this is actually good training. This yeah, is, it is. Of course, because like when we when we do or if we are given the opportunity now that things are starting to open up again to uh, participate in an exhibition and to have to be there for the opening night and to have to meet strangers, we can feel more comfortable about talking about art because that's what we've been doing. We've been kind of practicing that all along, you know, and, and uh, that's the only thing is that uh, uh, reason why I picked that, that particular Paul Klein episode, you know, he was talking about uh, vulnerability and uh, Diane, what, uh, what was he talking about for our listeners? What did you pick up from that? Well, I think um, in order to get people to feel like they're connected to you as well as your art, they want to know a little bit more about you as an artist and, you know, the artist's life and <laughs> all that. But <laughs> so I think that's kind of what it's all about. And I, I think if people um, can connect better with you, they're more likely to maybe purchase more, more art and um, understand it better at least and um, see where the artist is coming from. 
So it makes more sense to them, maybe. Yeah. Why and what for? And you know, why did you create that particular piece? And a little bit. Yeah. And when he mentions the, uh, you know, vulnerability, maybe. Uh, it just, I mean, you're not expected to uh, hear your entire personal life with strangers. Well, you know, I was, uh, I was. <laughs> And I was abandoned. No, no, come on. If that's rela- if that's re- relatable to your art, it may be necessary. But you know, it's just, it's open up. You know, just open up a little bit about you know, uh, and, and uh, to uh, kind of like Sergio Goldman this time they kind of draw a full circle about you know, you know uh, why you've created that particular piece of artwork. And uh, I love in the in the Sergio Gomez video when he's talking about that as an example. He had one artist that uh, he had uh, uh, when he on the gallery visitors noticed that there seemed to be footprints, children's footprints. And what happened was he had a wonderful story to tell about it that he had uh, varnished, completed, he put it on the floor and had varnished it. And his children went running across it barefooted. <laughs> so he just went ahead and left that in there, put another coat of varnish on top. Kind of like added, you know, add a little extra, extra story, you know, to the, you know, to the art, and that's you know, those are the kinds of things that the potential collectors like to know about, and they like to hear. So, uh, you know, dying with your dogs. Maybe while you were painting, sometime a dog jumps up and knocks your brush, <laughs> or More likely the goats. <laughs> the goats. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Johnson's in her guineas, yeah. You know, while they're yapping, you know, she, she you pick it, uh, it's a particular color because the guineas seem to remind you of that, you know. <laughs> they talk when they're talking about the story. You know. Johnson, did, what'd you think about the Paul Klein? Uh, you were in that, you were in the other class, but you weren't in that particular class. What did it bring up some memories of what you were experiencing uh, during his course? Um. I don't know that it brought up some memories, but you know, the vulnerability, I don't, you know, you don't have to, to, to expose your dark history of vulnerability. (laughs) I mean, it's just letting people kind of get a feeling for what you were thinking and, and why you painted something, you know, as the landscape, it was, but you know, it was a beautiful day out and you just were moved by a particular area where, when you were painting, you know, but, uh, you know, if you've got some deep, dark secrets, nobody needs to know about those things. <laughs> I looked up the word vulnerability. Uh, yeah, I did look up the word vulnerability, and it says the quality or state of being exposed to the possibility of being attacked or harmed, either physically or emotionally. I don't think you need to go there with with people about, about you know. But, um, yeah, you just... Well, I- a little bit vulnerable, but not your deep dark secrets. <laughs> well, I think part of it is that um, when you're p- creating artwork, a part of you is in that work, right. and it is a very personal connection. Mm-hmm. And to be able to put it out there for the public to see, and you know, sometimes you get criticism, or you know, people have make rude comments, or <laughs> you know, it's it's all part of it. But it kind of if initially when you start doing it it's you you feel very vulnerable like you're putting yeah. your <laughs> your yeah your life somebody, out there and you know and, and somebody's cutting it down it's like it's yeah really it hurts your feelings hurt. really bad yeah, yeah. Uh, that's why a lot of times the, i will just show the jewelry part of my work rather than put paintings out or show paintings you know at a show because uh, i also make jewelry i would rather I, it doesn't bother me to put sell jewelry because if they don't like it then they don't have to buy it but if i show paintings and somebody says something nasty about my work then that really hurts you know <laughs> i guess i've had a whole lot of of my um uh, it hurts a lot more when somebody says something nasty about my artwork and not only uh you know something nasty another vulnerability like i've been within the last couple of years i've been entering these uh these online uh, contests jury contests and this week, but it's been a while, you know, when I started, I was getting rejection and I just kept at it, you know, where I would enter and pay the application fee and not get accepted. And I was like, oh, wow. And then all of a sudden it started clicking. 
Well, I've been riding high because I've been doing pretty good. But this week, I got three rejections. It's been a long time since I've had a rejection. And I'll be honest with you, I almost, well, I'm not going to go with those guys anymore. But, no, I just, this is part of the game, Clyde, of talking to myself. You know, this is. This is what. This is, yeah, and, and you know, and no matter what level you are, you're going to get rejected because the shows yeah. can only accept so many pieces of artwork, you know, whether it's online or offline. Yep. And they have to make a decision about, you know, what they can take and what they can't. And sometimes, I mean, the judges admit that. They say, you know, sometimes it's just like it, it, that they have such a hard time deciding. They just go like, any, meeny, money, mo kind of thing, <laughs> you know, and pick one because they're all so good or you know they want to keep them all but they can't so but the fact what has bolstered my ego up and it has kept me from getting completely depressed is that i've been accepted and so many and i've been awarded so many awards it's now okay all right i wasn't right for those folks okay good and well yeah there is that and then there's also you know it depends on the judge too maybe she's not the kind of artist that you know it, a lot of it depends on the judge that they've picked to pick things, you yeah. know. Mm-hmm. But in, in this this vulnerability that comes in, you know, that comes into play, you know. And the fact, you know, I've sold some works. You know, I haven't sold as much as I would like, but I've sold some works. So I know in my heart that my art is good. And it comes into play maybe, uh, you know, the – the, they had too many still lives, so they had too many uh, landscapes, or I don't even remember what what images it was. The, uh, I think I ended up a couple animals, yeah, my donkey or whatever. You know, they got accepted in one, but they got rejected in another. But hey, <laughs> well, you know, years ago I used to show dogs, and you go in the breed ring; they were all the same breed. They were exact, you know. And if you didn't know your dogs, you, you'd think they were all the same dog, you know. And But the judge had to decide, you know, what ones were the best ones. And sometimes that's what it was. It's just their opinion on that day. And maybe, you know, they you could show them the same dogs the following week and they'd pick three other ones. You know, it's it's just kind of, some of it's just kind of a crapshoot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, what makes them decide one over the other and some of them sometimes that there's so many things that they could be so close and they they, like i said they have to make a decision they just have to pick one Mm -hmm. sometimes sometimes there's but as an artist when you get rejected you think oh my god i'm no good you know it's my work it's yeah your mind plays it makes you feel really bad (laughs) your head starts talking nasty to you yeah (laughs) but really it doesn't a lot of times, it's not that at all. It's like I don't know. But podcast where we talked about that, we reviewed uh, uh, Clee and uh, Raffy and Clee's, you know, comments on that and advice. It, I'll let your head play tricks with you. you know? Right. Yeah. On. When I used to sell Tupperware, there was this lady. She used to do the um, the pep talks, and she used to say, "Don't let that stinking thinking really get you." Mm-hmm. And that, that was always a, a thing that I used to always say, watch out for the stinking <laughs> thinking, you know, because it can get you, you know, but yeah. <laughs> Your yeah, brain you can't get that stinking thinking right away. <laughs> yeah, you just can't get depressed about it. And, you know, put yourself down and all that. You just have to get, oh, well, next one. <laughs> Move on to the next one. <laughs> yeah. Our or we have listeners that are uh, artists and uh, just people who are interested in them. <laughs> That's when you uh, go to a, an opening a show and you run in, into an artist and everything. Uh, that's what the artist story is all about. Okay? Don't expect it to be real. Some of them, you know, they practice their little, their little what, what Paul Klein used to call your elevator pitch. And, but then when you start asking questions, some of them will slam up and some will talk to you. But don't think negative about it. That's what this, this is a learning experience. We all have to uh, open ourselves up and uh, uh, become vulnerable and uh, tell why we uh, create art. Some of us are more experienced in doing that than others. So with that, I think we'll wrap up this episode, episode 98 of the Artist Friends podcast for May the 24th, 2021. This is Clyde J. Kale. 
And we have been talking about our artist's vulnerability and telling our artist's story with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And I'll say goodnight to Diane. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Constance. Good night, everyone. Good night, Constance. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. Yes, thank you so much for listening. And as always, please give us a enjoy these podcasts. However you find us, give us a thumbs up, star rating, whatever kind of positive rating you can find. It's much appreciated. Bye. Until next time. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash c-b-r-o-s-n-a-n-s Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com if you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or a star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.